great. So tell me what, what you guys are up to today. So right now I'm seen in the command center, uh, which is inside of the Rising Star cave system, um, about eight meters underground uh, and about uh, 20 meters from the, 25 meters from the surface. Uh, the voices you hear in the background are actually uh, live audio, uh, internet streaming from the Lissetti and Dinaletti chamber. And uh, right now I'm monitoring the excavations going on in those chambers. We have four people who are, um, uh, four people who are excavating in 101 chamber and uh, uh, two people that are down in the Lissetti chamber. And you're about to see Rick uh, Hunter pass behind me on his way to go do a sediment collection uh, trip. He's uh, just keep kidding up right there. You can see him over in the corner. Hi, how are you? And he's about to do a sediment collection trip, which means uh, traveling for about 30 minutes through the cave, climbing dragons back, uh, and then hauling um, probably you know, five, 10 or 15 kilos of sediment up through the chute and then bringing it back as he chuckles painfully at the wow. thought of doing that. <laughs> Yeah, I bet. It's, it's, so it, it's gall grueling physical work there, right? That's right. It's all physical work. So we are, but a big difference between this and the original Rising Star Cave system is that we're now hooked up for wireless internet in both of the chambers. That gives us incredibly powerful communication um, uh, system. So not only do we have CCTV coverage of all of the chambers recording everything that we do, all the work that's going on. At the same time, we have um, we have uh, live internet coverage. I see John Hawks coming down with his lunch in hand. It's Nathan <laughs> <laughs> as he's coming back and getting ready. We're so we're working a late shift today, so we didn't get in until just after ten. And uh, because we're doing a Facebook Live feed. Uh, with National Geographic at five, and then we're going to uh, Google Hangout to a school in Dallas, Texas, just after that for an assembly. Um, um, that Dallas would that be? Um, oh, I'm blanking on his name right now, but uh, uh, John Mead. Yes, John Mead. I'm friends with him. Yeah, John uh, Mead. Yes, it is. Friends with him on We've Twitter. Been doing this all over the world now. Uh, one of the great things of this too is being able to talk to schools, and university classrooms instantly, and, and literally bring them into the chamber. As we're uncovering uh, Homo naledi specimens. Yeah, this is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's, it, it's amazing for us, too. Believe me. Yeah. We're having a... Let me, oh, cool. There's John. Hey, John. How are you? How's it going? All right. How are um, you? So what, the goals of this are very, very focused. The goals of this, um, uh, this three-week expedition, of which we're nearing the end of week one. And that is uh, that we are testing effectively four hypotheses. As you know, uh, there have been a series of, of, of people both in refereed papers and a large number in the sort of non-refereed press, if you will, who said that there's no way that Homo naledi could have come down the chute, um, that there must be another entrance and looking at all different ways. So what's happening in the Dinaledi chamber right now is, uh, is a test of that hypothesis. Uh, we're excavating a large debris cone uh, at the base of the chute, and uh, I can tell you that uh, we can now show that indeed Homo naledi did come down <laughs> the chute for sure. Mm -hmm. There are bodies right at the in this debris cone okay. uh, coming out, which is pretty amazing. And so that was that was an exciting discovery for us, um, and, and we're excavating those hominids now. A second um, goal of that was if we were would find. Homo naledi at the base of the chute, then it's likely the most uh, probable place for artifacts or cut marks or other cultural remains, like potentially remains of fire. Mm -hmm. And so, very excitingly, we've now, within the first week, have established that Homo naledi did come down the chute, at least some of them. And so now we're on the hunt for obviously more of them, but perhaps more importantly, potential of um, uh, cultural remains, evidence of fire, any evidence of, of their utilization, because we're in the most likely spot right now for that. That's what's going on in the Dinale chamber, and really the, the entire uh, excavation is focused on that, uh, uh, in that area. The second uh, Lacetti 
excavation is chasing the remains of Nao. Um, Nao obviously was found tucked into a little alcove, uh, but it's got a sort of debris slope off the back. Uh, uh, earlier this year, we discovered a piece of sacrum uh, that was sliding down the back some several meters away in this terrible tiny little hole. And if you've been watching any of this, you'll see pictures of people's feet and but sticking out of a hole mm-hmm. they were going and and so that sacrum articulated with the lumbar vertebra of 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 Naledi uh, of Neo and so that places that as the most likely spot for um, uh, finding where his missing hands his missing feet and his missing pelvis are we have remains of all the other stuff but they've gone somewhere and given his completeness it's likely they're there so, um, uh, so the, uh, so that's, that's really what all of, sorry, I'm just correcting something here. Um, uh, no, never mind. Sorry. It's a, I just got spammed. That's the other problem with internet. <laughs> yeah. Spam by antivirus software. Um, the, the, uh, uh, and so that, that's what that, um, excavation is about but that's in extremely difficult conditions because they're squeezed into this tiny hole and 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 that's what we're doing there's really not much more to it than that well i wanted to ask you a couple of questions i mean you'd answered about four of them uh right away but you haven't found any artifacts yet that's part of the hunt we haven't found any artifacts inside of either of the chambers Mm -hmm. um yet uh but you know i'm a little bit less I find it a strange thing that everyone seems to want to be demanding mm-hmm. that since artifacts have almost never been found in association with mm-hmm. with ancient humans ever in any of these circumstances, yet everyone's happy to allow the sort of assumption that modern humans are the makers of all of this stuff. Secondly, grave goods or burial goods, if that hypothesis stands, are not the norm. In the yeah. Human condition. Yeah, I was They're thinking more of just whatever tools, down. whatever tools or things they might have had with them, just to help them get in and out. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. No, but anyway, we, we are looking, and no, we haven't in the chambers. Um, you've probably heard rumors that we have some art, uh, artifacts in other areas of this system, and that is true. But the, the problem with that, we have to date those, we have to associate those, and of course, Africa is full of artifacts. You mm-hmm. know these cave systems and stuff. So we have to be very careful about um, uh, associations uh, of that. Uh, so the answer is, uh, as of right this moment, we do not have any artifacts in either of the chambers. But, look, we are just beginning. We've only mm-hmm. been at at the this uh, Dinaletti excavation for a week. And to be perfectly honest, after setting up the excavation protocols and methods, we've probably been digging you know, 18 hours max right? Um, in, in that period. So, you know, it's, as you know, it's just painfully slow uh, work and, uh, and, and, but, but very rewarding in these cases because we actually find stuff. Yeah, I bet. And how, how big is the team that's with you right now? Okay. So this is actually, um, we've changed the system now. So this is actually our, our professional uh, exploration team, what we call the Hill Exploration Project that Lida Hill supports. And so that uh, comprises, uh, let me just count them up, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, yeah. and four, right? Ten? That's right. That's so, so. Yeah, so the underground team is 10 people. I imagine right that's now. that's and, bigger than it's all, been before. All, all professionals. So yeah. you know, we've now had we've now had four years of experience. I mean, our cavers underground now probably have the price of the most experienced underground explorers in the world, mm-hmm. and certainly on the continent of Africa. We brought three of we we have four of the previous underground astronauts out. Mm-hmm. Um, three of which, uh, all of the underground astronauts have remained in association with the project, which we're all very pleased with in one way or the other, either as scientists, co-authors, or engaged in other ways. We've got four of them out. Now Marina is here, of course, permanently. Okay. Um, and one question I was going to ask, you said you did find some, some new fossils. 
um, already. That you're pretty sure they're they're Naledi looking at him so far. No, Naledi is so easy to identify. Okay. Uh, because these fossils, uh, the, the fossils are so homogeneous in morphology. I, there's no mistaking it. Uh, when we pulled the first teeth out, that you had, uh, I could probably even make an educated guess that it's an adult male mm-hmm. on Naledi, just judging by looking at them. It is what it is. I mean. <laughs> You get the right parts of the body, and you'll never mistake the lady for anything else. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. And uh, do you, I, I, it might be too early to say this, but have you uh, started or completed any of the dating for the fossil like Nao from the Lissetti Chamber? No, we haven't. I mean, another goal for that excavation is potentially getting um, material out of there that, that, that we are confident is in association with Homo naledi. Ideally, you know, some of the the very uh, the small uh, amounts of fauna that are in that chamber, we still don't know whether that stuff is directly associated with Naledi. And, um, you know, one of the reasons, and, and they tend to be, the animals that are coming out of there are kind of smallish, cryptic animals. These are the and scavengers, so, and then there was an owl, I think, is that yeah, right? Yeah, kind of like carnivores, small, the kind of things you often find dead in the deep recesses mm-hmm. of the caves that are comfortable with going into sort of the immediate dark zone and then end up dying um and the problem with those for the methods that work here is that most of these are carnivores and the enamel is very very thin and so electron spin resonance won't work on them and even then i it's kind of nerve-wracking to do them because they may give you a spurious date that's meaningless we know that the lissetti chamber is a little bit easier to get to you know we've got some mm-hmm. contamination from the surface because it's effectively downhill from the existing entrances, mm-hmm. whereas the Dinlay chamber is uphill. Yeah, you can so you don't get the contamination, the natural contamination. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we're hoping is maybe, you know, we'd find a few dozen more Homo naledi in there and then we can maybe look at sacrificing some. For right now, the working hypothesis, because Nao is so, and the other hominids from there are so morphologically similar to. Um, the one from Dim- a chamber that's probably the same age. Preservation is identical. Yeah. Okay. Um, so forgive me if this has already been announced or published, but this summer I was totally consumed with my own book, my new book that's coming out next year. Um, awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I was going to ask about uh, DNA. With the, with the new, new age, it seems like uh, yes. getting DNA is going to be possible. Where are you with that? Um, look, uh, Guys, are you in communication with Rick? Go Sorry, ahead. We're just Go talking. ahead. Yeah, we sure are. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Um, the the we've tried three different labs for ADNA, and they failed. But again, very early test, maybe mm-hmm. not the best material. I wouldn't. I given the age and given the preservation here, I wouldn't give up hope. Everyone's believe me. Everyone's still really interested. Yes. <laughs> we're obviously moving into proteomics and. All this other stuff that's that's there too. Okay, yeah, just curious. I had to ask. I'm a DNA guy by heart, so I just yeah, had to, no, just I had know. to ask. Don't um, worry, we ask every day. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, well, I'll let you guys get back to it. But uh, please, if either of you are in New York City, let me know. I'd love to get you in the podcast studio. I'll certainly be in New York City probably for the end of the year sometime. Yeah, I imagine that you guys got to come back to the Natural History Museum at some point, right? Yeah, I'm going to be uh, – I my next trip is actually in two weeks. I leave the day this expedition ends, and I'll be going to uh, Alabama and Dallas. Okay. Um, I was going to go to Miami, but I've kind of changed my mind right now. Yeah. So it's uh, – yeah. So um, I, I'll, I'll – if I get a moment free, I might pop up in New York, but I'll see. I'll All right. Let you know. Just let me know. And I'll, I'll be following you in Dallas too because I'm friends with John, so – Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, wa- watch his Google Hangout this afternoon. I certainly will try. Thank you. All righty. Bye-bye. All right. Appreciate your time. Bye-bye, John.